That's how we interact with each other in language. But when you have a text like the Quran that is always read through the Sunnah of the Prophet, you have to look at what the Sunnah of the Prophet is telling you to understand the intended meaning of the text. And in that case, the intended meaning of God's words is not necessarily the one that's closest to the evident meaning. It is the one that is best supported by the evidence of the other verses of the Quran, of the Sunnah of the Prophet, of our, our understanding of the overall teachings of Islam. This is what tells us the intended meaning of the, of the Quran. And so when we read that verse that I mentioned, the verse 434, the quote, quote, wife beating verse. When you read that, you don't read it through what comes to your mind first. You read it what comes to your mind after you understand the sunnah of the Prophet. And the sunnah of the Prophet on this issue is very clear. What does Aisha say in Sahih Hadith? She says, the Prophet, ma daraba ahadan qat. The Prophet never struck anybody bi yadihi, never struck anybody with his hand, except not a man, not a woman, not a servant, except in the path of jihad. Never struck anybody. And when this, uh, this, uh, first, this verse is revealed that I read to you about Adri Buhanna, the context in which it's revealed, according to Hadith and Sunan Tirmidhi and other books, is that the uh, a woman comes to the Prophet and complains about her husband striking her. And the Prophet says, La tadribu ima Allah. Do not strike the female servants of God. And then uh, uh, Omar comes to the Prophet, depending on the, ver the version of the Hadith, comes to the Prophet and says, You know, the, the women in Medina are not, uh, they're very, uh, they, they're kind of um, overcoming their husbands. You know, they're very like forceful in their personalities. They're not like the, the women in Mecca. And so then the, the then this verse is revealed and talks about how uh, that, you know, if your wife is having no shoes, first you admonish her. If she does not desist, then you uh, see sleeping with her. She still continues. Then the verse says you strike her. But what does the prophet say about that? He said, Ulaika laysa ulaika khayarakum. Those people who strike their wives are not the best of you. In another verse, version of the hadith in the Mustadrak of Al Hakam and Naisaburi, he says, lan The best of you will not strike your wives. And in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet says, والسلام, La yajlidu ahadukum uh, imra'at, uh, jald, jald abd, thumma yujami'uhu akhir al nahar, or akhir al, uh, al yawm. Let one of you, let none of you strike his wife like he'd strike a slave and then go and sleep with her at the end of the day. And in his final sermon, his final khutbah at Hajj, what is one of the things the Prophet says? He says, Fear God as concerns your wives because you have taken them as a trust from God. They are, they are in your trust. And he says, only if they do commit what's called, what he says is fahisha mubayyina, an egregious egregious uh, you know, inappropriate behavior, egregious fahisha then strike them but what? Only strike them darb ghair mubarrih in a way that leaves no mark that causes no harm so that's the sunnah of the prophet that we have to, that, that through which we read this verse and through which Every Islamic school of thought would read this verse. Which is why in the various schools of law, and you now, I, I see a lot of you are students here, you know um, how complicated fiqh is. You know how many different opinions, like for example in the Hanafi Medhab you can have, you know, Zahir Riwaya, and you have the the opinion of Imam Abi, Abi, Abi Hanifa, you have the opinion of Abu Yusuf, you have the opinion of Muhammad bin Hassan Shibani, you have the opinion of Zufar bin Hudayl, you have all these opinions. So fiqh is very complicated. But across the, the different madhabs, there's, a, there's the same theme over and over again. You can only strike your wife lightly in a way that causes no harm. If you cause her harm, you're liable for the dia, 
you're liable for compensating her for injuries. And according to um, every school except the Hanafi school, the, a judge, if a wife goes to a judge and says, my husband's beating me, and there's witnesses or evidence that the husband's beating her or the, the husband confesses, the judge can do what's called tafriq. He can end the marriage legally. And the wife will get to keep her mahr, and the husband has to pay her nafaka until her idda ends, and the marriage is over. And this is what I found very interesting in my research, that if you look at Sharia court information about Sharia courts, whether it's in you know Iran in the 900s or Andalusia in the 900s or Syria in the 1300s or you know Jenne in Mali in the 1900s or Zanzibar in the 1900s or Yemen in the, the mid-20th century or Egypt in the 1920s, you always see the same thing. Husband or wife goes to the court, says, my husband's beating me. If there's evidence that he's beating her, like physically, if there's witnesses, if the husband confesses, judge would uh, do, uh, end the marriage. If the woman wants, he'll end the marriage. She keeps her dowry. She gets maintenance. And the husband, if there's injury, has to pay to compensate the injury. And this is, for example, in the Hanafi realm of uh, Palestine in the 17th century, there's one case where a woman has some of her teeth knocked out by her husband, and the judge says, you have to pay, husband, you have to pay your wife three gold coins because this is the dia for teeth. And so it's very interesting because in the, 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 the tradition of American law and British law, it's only in the very late 19th century in the, or in the 20th century that uh, a husband can ever have to pay any money to his wife. Before then, my husband, women aren't allowed to, married women aren't allowed to own property. And, they, and there's something called in law tort immunity, where the husband's actually immune from any case that his wife brings against him that he harmed her. It's impossible for him to be liable financially to her. But in the Islamic tradition, since the very beginning, since the life of the Prophet, part of the Sharia was that just because you're married to somebody doesn't mean that if you injure them, you don't have to pay for it. You can't be held accountable before the law. You're always held accountable. In the Sharia, in the Sharia, if you harm anybody, you're held accountable. Doesn't matter if they're your wife or your husband. 